Hello there. Life. We use this word all the time, but what does it mean? What is life made of? The answer is relationships. Life is relationships. And your life will only be as happy as your relationships are. The purpose of life is expansion. So what does that mean? If life is about relationships and the purpose of life is expansion, it means the most of your expansion is going to come through relationships. But what do we know about expansion? It's all about contrast, wanted and unwanted, light and dark. This means that nothing will be more full of contrast than your relationships. Relationships will be the source of your greatest joy and the source of your greatest pain. In relationships, you're going to run into problems. You're going to run into aspects that are unwanted. You will feel the pain of it. By virtue of having those experiences, you're going to get very clear about what you would prefer instead. You're going to find out what you really want and need. Pain is the universe speaking to you through you. It's the universe saying, right now, there is a contraction. The opposite of expansion. Right now, you are stuck focusing on, or speaking about, or doing the thing that is the contraction, instead of going in the direction of the expansion. Once we know that pain is signaling us that a change needs to be made, that there is an expansion in the circumstance, something we need to go in the direction of, but we don't go, instead we continue to face towards the problem, we create suffering. That's what suffering is. It's becoming aware that we are in a contracted space, knowing what the expansion would be, and then not lining up with that. Where are we going wrong with relationships when they become the greatest source of our perpetual pain? We are getting stuck in the trap of suffering. We feel the pain within the relationship. We are aware that the relationship is contracted and in need of expansion in some direction. We need change. Yet we continue to feed the pain and the contraction with thoughts that tell us that change is impossible. We continue to tell the other person we are in a relationship with what they are doing wrong. Take a look back at your early life. Most of us, when we look back at our early life, find that we were in situations surrounded by people who had the control over our lives. And those people were saying to us, there is no option for improvement. There's no change that can be made. You're just going to be stuck in the suffering that you're stuck in because I'm not going to do anything about it. And you can't either. That is the most torturous place to be. And we develop a belief that is, nothing's going to change. I can't find the improvement. I'm basically stuck in this situation. We carry that belief with us into relationships. It's the mother who says we have no money for a bike, so you can't have one. Instead of the mom who says, let's brainstorm ways we could figure out how to get one. It's the dad who takes his son to the psych ward to get on medication for his depression rather than tries to find a way to make the relationship between himself and his son feel better. Take a look at your life. How many ways, overt or covert, did the people in your life give you the message? There's nothing you can do to make it better. It's just the way it is. You're stuck. This is what happens in relationships when we have that subconscious belief. Is that the minute we start to feel pain in relationships, we begin to spiral we begin to feel doom. We begin to think there is no improvement that can be made. This is what I'm committing to, is this misery. It's at this point that we begin to criticize. We need change more than anything in the world, but we feel absolutely powerless to do it. So we criticize. If you want to understand more about criticism, feel free to watch my YouTube video called Criticism. We tell the other person everything they're doing wrong. That is us screaming for change. We are desperate for it. But do we get that change? No. Instead, we put the other person in a state of defense. We cause them to close down. When we lay out everything that somebody's doing wrong and cause them to go into a state of defense and don't lay out what we would prefer them to do instead, we're essentially damaging the relationship and making it impossible to repair. So what happens after this person shuts down is we inevitably end up in a position where we're looking at an end to the relationship. There is no way for us to line up with our expansion other than to get rid of the source of our suffering. It is at this point, or let's say far, far, far before that, when we start feeling pain in our relationships, 
that we have to stop ourselves dead in our tracks and remember the sacred directive of relationships. The sacred directive of relationships is to use the pain in the relationship and your awareness of what is going wrong to decide clearly what you would prefer. Use the contrast to decide what you need and want. Make the changes you want to see as practical as possible and communicate that very clearly to yourself and to the other person. This is actively and intentionally creating your life. This is the opposite of powerlessness. Now universally a very interesting thing happens when you are in this process. Instead of continuing to feed the vibration of what is going wrong, you are designing your preference. You are designing how you would like the relationship to look and you are offering that vibration to the other person. Instead of sharing the contraction with them, you are sharing the expansion. That is an offering. They can then choose to step into that place. Instead of showering them with what they are doing wrong, lay out what doing it right would look like. If you are meant to have that relationship in your life, the other person will open to you instead of close to you. They will move into the expansion and shift. If they do not, that person's place in your life needs to change. And potentially, that change means ending the relationship. Here's an example. Let's say that a woman's in a relationship with a man, but soon after that honeymoon phase ends, she realizes that she's in a relationship with a man who's a workaholic. She starts to be in pain, and she gets in more and more pain every time she lines up with the experience of being not the first thing on his priority list. Let's say that what she wants and needs is for the man she is committed to to put the relationship and the sacred space of the partnership first in his life. He does not have to choose between his work and the woman he loves. He can have both. But obviously, having both must look differently than it does now in order to meet her need. At this point, the woman will probably spiral into torment because she is believing her thoughts that tell her that she is unloved and unvalued, that there's nothing he's going to do to change. She'll complain to friends. She'll criticize him and tell him everything he's doing wrong. He shuts down, which makes matters worse because he disconnects from her more when he does this. And she is now suffering. The relationship is headed towards an end. They are suffering because neither person has used the sacred directive. They have not used the pain to conceptualize of and create the improvement. They are telling the story, this is just how it is. If this woman were to use the sacred directive, she would use the pain she's experiencing to decide exactly what she needs and wants. She would lay that down in front of him. Let's say that she realizes that what she really wants and needs is for her partner in this life, in this case him, to put the relationship and the sacredness of that partnership first in his life. Then she thinks, how is he not doing that in my life right now? And how do I need that to change? So she might come to him both with that primary need and also with suggestions about how to fulfill that need. For example, she might say, I need you to commit to a certain time of day where your work day ends and all of your effort and energy is then put into our life together, put into the relationship. And she might say, if our relationship experiences a rupture, I need you to make repair your number one priority and cancel your other plans. And she might say, I need you to stay connected to me instead of disconnected. So I'd like to go to counseling together to figure out how to stay connected. It is up to the man in this scenario once that expanded place has been offered, to say yes or no to it. If he says no, that is when we have a real problem. You cannot unwant something that you want. You cannot unneed something that you need. That is your soul having gone into a place of expansion. You can't unexpand. So you have one option in relationships when there is a want or a need, and that's to meet it. So if your partner cannot meet a need that you have, that specifically involves them, the relationship has to change. If the relationship you are in cannot meet your needs, and if you cannot think of any creative way to meet those needs and stay together, the relationship will inevitably end. Doesn't matter if it's now or later. Sometimes this is how we find that we are truly incompatible. This is how we find out that our needs are diametrically opposed to another person's needs 
And so we cannot have our life be conjoined in the way that it's currently conjoined. But more likely is that you've lined up with somebody whose wants and needs are in perfect alignment with your own. Using the previous example, let's say that you are in a relationship with a workaholic. Oftentimes, workaholics are obsessively trying to pour their energy into success because success is the way that they think they're going to get that commitment, that love, that appreciation, all those feel-good things they want so that they can be connected to someone else. So chances are, if they just realize that that's what they're really after, give up on the work aspect to a certain degree and put more of their effort into what they already have, which is the connection of that relationship right here and now, it will actually be in alignment with their highest good and what they actually wanted. It is more likely that the people in your life have lined up with you because your wants and needs are also a match to their expansion. This means making the changes that need to be made are in both of our best interests. In a relationship, once we know the wants and needs, it is up to us to brainstorm how to meet those wants and needs in ways that work for us both. We need to be as creative as we can be. And if we cannot, we need to be honest and part ways to create space for people whose needs and wants are a match to our own. Relationships force us to be adaptable. But one thing must be said for partnerships specifically. If the health of the partnership is not the first priority, then you are not in a partnership. You are in a lifestyle arrangement, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that, provided that you are in a partnership with someone whose priority is lifestyle arrangement and not partnership. So be super honest about what your true priorities are. So the next time you begin to suffer in your relationship, I want you to remember the sacred directive of relationship. Instead of letting yourself spiral into that bottomless pit of despair that's the result of having told yourself or believed the thoughts that there's nothing that can be done, that this is what you're committed to, that the improvement can't be made, I want you to really consciously use the pain that you're experiencing to design what you would prefer, to get very clear about wants and needs, and then to lay out that alternative reality that creation for your partner or the person in your life and give them the opportunity to step into that expanded place. Have a good week.